as you may already know, my name's Claire Baker and I'm a former clutterholic and borderline hoarder. I successfully cleared all my clutter over 20 years ago without the need for an expensive home visit. And I've been helping people around the world do exactly the same ever since so that they too can know what it's like to live a completely clutter-free life forever. With over 20 years of experience and working with clutterholics and hoarders, I know that there are some common characteristics that we all share that can help explain why we struggle with our clutter. So let me explain one of them to you now. So if I ask you what your clutter-free dream life and home looks like, how would you describe it? I suspect you have a clearer idea about what you don't want than what you do want. And the problem with that is that when you think about what you don't want, your brain processes the don't, the negative, after it processes and registers the verb. So it actually focuses on and processes what you don't want rather than what you do. For example, if you tell a child, don't touch X, Y, Z, what does that child go and do? It touches the thing that you don't want it to touch. That's because their brain hears and processes touch that thing before it hears and processes the don't. Top tip, if you don't want someone to do something, be specific about what you do want them to do because their brain will only focus on the verb. We need to apply the same principle to our clutter clearing. We need to focus on what we do want rather than what we don't want. But how do we do that if we only know what we don't want? Hmm. Well, try doing what I did when I was single and dreamt about the man that I wanted to share my life with. I could list 101 faults with all the men that I dated. I knew what I didn't want, but I seemed to keep attracting the same type of man. If anyone asked me what qualities I wanted in a man, my default setting was to be able to talk about what I didn't want rather than what I did want. So I switched it up and started focusing on what I did want instead. I drew a table with two columns. Uh, in the left-hand column, I listed all the faults with the men that I dated and all the qualities that I either hated or grown to hate. It was shocking how many things that I managed to list. Then in the right-hand column, I put the exact opposite of those faults and qualities, so positive things. So, for example, I'd been a weekend widow several times uh, with men who were committed to their work, their football or playing golf more than they were committed to spending spending time with me. So what did I want instead? Simple. I wanted someone who enjoyed spending time with me at weekends. Now, here's the actual list of what I, I created with my positives. I still have it nearly 20 years later, in which I can tick all of the things uh, apart from one in relation to my husband, which is how I knew that he was actually the man I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. And incidentally, it's why when during a rough patch three years into our marriage and we were actually getting divorced, we were able to face the issues that we had and deal with them uh, and cancel the divorce. Because on the list I had that I wanted to be with somebody who was willing to face and work through their issues and challenges. And that uh, definitely helped uh, with us learning and growing together. Only because I had been with men who didn't have that quality did I know that I wanted and needed it. Now, it can be surprisingly hard to think of the positive opposite of what you don't want, but it's definitely an exercise worth doing to get clearer about your clutter-free dream. You can always go one step further and turn the positives into affirmations to say to yourself each day. That's what I do. Uh, and you'll notice that when you start focusing on the specific, detailed positives of your clutter-free dream, you'll start to notice the progress that you make towards that dream, which in turn will help you to motivate you to keep going through the bad days and the tough weeks that we all have when we're clearing our clutter.